It all started in 1798. The community that had been growing up around the trading post known as Old Fort Schuyler had expanded to the point where its residents sought a better civil structure and a better name for their community. The story of how the name of the new village was selected has often been told. The generally accepted story is that there was a gathering at Bags Tavern on Lower Genesee Street. The purpose of the meeting was to map out plans for asking the state to incorporate the village and give it a new name. Several names were bandied about. Washingtonville was suggested, as was Kent and Genondoa, in honor of the old Oneida chief. But they couldn't agree on a name, so the people at the meeting decided to leave it up to chance. Everybody at the meeting was allowed to write a name on a slip of paper and put that paper in a hat. Selected was the entry written by Erastus Clark. On Clark's slip of paper was written Utica. Clark was a scholar and knew that the original Utica was a Mediterranean port city in what is today's Tunisia. And so in March 1798, Herkimer County was subdivided, creating the counties of Shenango and Oneida. Then on April 3rd, 1798, the New York State Legislature passed a bill creating the village of Utica. That same year, Timothy Dwight, the president of Yale College, passed through the area. His published account of his journey gives us a look at what the newly named Utica looked like. It was a pretty village, he wrote, of about 50 houses, some of which weren't built as permanent structures. The houses were built along just two streets, Whitesboro Street and Genesee Street. Dwight wrote that most of the villagers in Utica were traders and mechanics, and that they had already already achieved success. We should note that much of the growth experienced in the early days of Utica came in much the same way as it would 180 years later through the diversity of those settling here. In 1802, the Reverend John Taylor visited Utica and wrote down his impressions. The Reverend wrote that Utica was comprised of people from 10 or 12 different nations and represented almost all religions. The hopes for Utica's future growth was attributed to the benefits of its central location and grow the village of Utica did. That growth required a second village charter in 1805. By the next year, the village of Utica had its first cemetery, although its owner reserved the right to use the cemetery grounds as pasture land for sheep and cows. Next week, more on the village of Utica and its transformation into a city. Produced with the cooperation of the United County History Center, I'm Joe Kelly, and this is Hidden History.